Hey guys, it's me with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. And there are a lot of ink samples here that I have to get through. So Pam handed me this bag of samples. There's 21 in here. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just speechless with how many she sent through. Although there are a couple that I'm going to take out of here that are ones that I already have. So she sent me another uh, one of Birmingham uh, Penco Milkweed milkweed then she sent me a few of barley which I will take out I think she sent me like three barleys and then I think she's yes cherry blossom so I will take those out I'll show you what those look like quickly so barley is this gorgeous yellow and I've really loved using it it's a really nice legible yellow as well and really good flowing so she sent me another three four three samples four samples gosh and I'm so so happy to be able to have more of those and then she also sent me cherry blossom I haven't had a chance to use my original sample yet but I just love this color so I'm so happy to have another one and then lastly Birmingham Penco milkweed did I spell that right milkweed which I had used in my moonlit rodent and I really love this this is the one I combined with Colorverse Alpha Sagittarius and created that kind of dusty pink so I'm very happy to have more of that so let's go ahead and start sampling what is in here. One of the other ones she had also sent me as well was Organic Studio Henry David Thoreau Walden Pond, which I already have some, so I won't be swatching it today. But this one has a really, really pretty dark teal undertone and then that mm, core, just gorgeous red sheen. The only warning with this one though is that even after it's dried, there is still risk of smudging. So it's not one that I use that often, but it is really pretty if you really like that type of sheen. So to get going with our swatching, what I have here is my B6 Galen leather notebook with Chamoe River paper, which is 52 GSM. Then I have my Rhodia paper for doing some swatching. I also have my Chamoe River paper, which has, I bought this as an A4 and I've cut them down to the personal size and then I've hole punched them and then I've added these stamps, stamped bottles on there. And then for the individual samples, I've done the same thing, but cut the piece of paper in half and then added that stamp in there as well. So I will be swatching on here as well as <laughs> these other three pieces of paper. And I also have my jars of water in here, one with warm water, one with cold water. I also have my pipettes, which you can buy like a ton of these off of Amazon. And I have my trusty ink sample vial for swatching as well as my, here we go, my Akakimori brass dip pen. Let's get started. The first ink is Birmingham Pen Co. Armadillo. And this one was a hard one for me because when I first put it on the page, I was like, is this purple? Is this gray? So I actually swatched it on both the gray color family as well as the purple color family and actually now that I'm looking at it through the camera it looks very purple gray <laughs> so I'm glad that I put it in both categories but it really is a beautiful and interesting color and the flow so far from my Kakimori brass tip pen it's actually really good flow it's not too wet I think it'll be great in a fine nib or you know even an extra fine nib so I'm looking forward to trying this out so the three places or four places that I'm swatching it are in my Tamoe River paper and then in the color ink family. So there you can see I'm putting it in gray as well. And then I have my Rhodia paper with the three circles there and then the half sheet of the Tamoe River paper to notate that it is a sample. So then when I do the swatching there, I'm putting it back on the purple just to make sure that I get it on both because as it dries, it does look purple. And now that I'm doing the voiceover, I'm looking at it again and it does look purple depending on what angle you're looking at. So then I'm gonna go ahead and write the pen, no, ink name, gosh, the ink name. And then I'm going to do the different line widths, which is what I love about the Kakamori Brass Nib is that you have the ability to do the different line widths and then do the little swirlies, figure eights and by doing that, it allows me to see uh, in a short span of time the different properties. The next one is Birmingham Penco Fox Squirrel. And I wasn't sure 
exactly what this would turn out to be and then I spilled a drop and foreshadowing that's not the first time that this is going to happen in this video but I make do I still swirl it around with my sample ink vial along with the swatching on the rhodia paper and I, I hate saying anything bad about brown but it's brown um depending on the type of brown brown is not something that I normally gravitate towards in terms of ink colors. I think it's great when it comes to fountain pen ink painting. For example, when I'm painting leaves or trees and then that's when I use it. Um, but for everyday writing, it's not one that I normally turn to. But with 30 inks, 30 days coming up, I think I will definitely try and use this in a pen and uh, use it for at least one day with journaling and things like that. So now I'm going to put a little bit on that Tamoe River paper and I really like that stamp to notate that it is a sample. And the reason that I do it in these four different places is just you don't have to do it this way. Everybody has a different way of cataloging their inks and their pens. And for me, you know, I have my ink journal where I keep track of everything chronologically. I have these swatches on the Rhodia paper, but now I can keep track of the color families in the Tamoe River paper in a personal notebook. The next ink is Birmingham Pen Co. Basil Pesto. And I was really surprised at how this went down at first. You can't tell in the drops, but as soon as I swirl it around, I was like, Oh my goodness because it looks green but then there's like hints of yellow and orange in the in the ink color when it's wet you don't see it as much when it's dry but it's so interesting when it's wet so one of the things that I found with this ink though is that you I, I was hoping to see when it dried you know that complexity of like the orangey yellow with the green but when it dries it dries a little bit more flat more green than it does that that yellowy um, color but it was really interesting when it went down wet but when it dries I still really really like this color and then to see it in the way that it reacts to the different papers this is one of the reasons why I do it on the Tamoy River paper as well as the Rhodia paper to be able to see that difference and there's other people who do it on mm, excuse me you know uh, now I cannot remember the names of the papers for the life of me but then, you know, there's the regalia paper that some people do it on the Midori paper, the Loistrum paper, because those are the types of different papers that they use. For me personally, the paper that I use on a day-to-day -day basis is Tamoli River paper, which is why it's the majority of where I do my sampling. But if you see here, when I'm going to bring up the sample here, like, look at how gorgeous that is. I really like that. The next one is Birmingham Pen Co. Copper Head. And just from the name, I'm thinking, is it going to be a little bit orange? And I think I was right, but it's a lot more of a pastel orange than I thought it was going to be. And when it first goes on the page, it's bright. It is, for me, bright. But when it dries, it is a little bit more muted. And I felt like this was um, in terms of flow. It's got a great flow uh, with my Kathy Mori Brass Dip pen. And I really enjoyed actually using it with this nib. I'm interested to see how this is going to work when I paint with it because I can already see how well this would go painting pumpkins with it this month. So keep an eye out for that. And the shading in this as well is actually really, really pretty. I, I can see this ink working really well with mixing colors, so I'm excited to see that as well and see what the different effects are. And I mean, it's that time of year for orange and pumpkins, and I don't actually have a lot of oranges in my collection, so I was really glad to be able to add this as well. But one of the things I like about this is that it really is a more muted orange once it dries. It's a very, very pretty color. and. It's not your typical like orange. I mean, that's why it's copperhead, but I do like the color overall. And you can see here how it's starting to dry. Very, very pretty color. The next one is Birmingham Penco Fresh Water Bog. Who names these? <laughs> I, uh, when, when you're naming an ink, what are you thinking when you name an ink? And I know that, you know, for some companies, the names of the inks have 
really meaningful stories behind them. And I wonder what is the story behind this one, but this is a gorgeous blue. I really like this. It reminds me a little bit of, oh, now I can't, I don't know if it's the right one. It's not Amaero, Pilot or Super Amaero that it reminds me of. There's another ink that it reminds me of, but I really like this shade of blue. It's not too dark of a blue. As you know, I like the lighter, more grayish blue, and I really like how this writes on the Kakamori Brass Dip pen. I also like the shading as well. Once it dries, the shading on these circles is very, very pretty. And I think, you know, I would love to use this in a painting as well with really, really beautiful winter florals. Oh, that would be so, so fun to use. And I'm finding more and more now that I do like blues, but more in the lighter blue section. I mean, the, the darker blues are lovely too, but they're not ones that I normally go for. I'm not sure why. I mean, I've been in this hobby for about two years now, and I don't know what it is about the lighter inks that I go for. I don't know. What is it about the muted inks that I like? I don't, don't know. But this one is really, really pretty. And I'm going to bring up the sample here. You'll see just how beautiful. I keep calling it beautiful, but it is a really lovely blue. So that's Freshwater Bog. The next one is Birmingham Pen Co. Heron. And I was gonna call, I was gonna pronounce it differently because it's just that type of day for me. Um, but you can see once I swirl it around, it's this really pretty dark teal. And I it reminds me of either La Bon Hera or Narwhal Atlantic Blue. It's a beautiful deep shade and also maybe a little bit like either Pilot or Shizuku, Kujuku or Shioro, um, but a very, very pretty color. And the way that it flows off of my Kakamori Brass Nap, it's not too wet, not too dry, would be really good in a fine nib as well. You can still see some of the color in the finer line that I do on the side here. So, I mean, it's really pretty with a broader nib, but then you can see as well in the finer line, you can still see some of that color, which is what I look for because I do use an extra fine or a fine nib most days. So for me, it's important to be able to do those different line widths so I can see if this is a color that you can actually see when writing. And that's one of the important things to me. I mean, when you've got a medium nib or a broad nib or a stub nib, it's really easy to see the shading, really easy to see the color, but when you've got an extra fine or fine nib, it may not be as easy. So that's one of the important properties to me is that is it a wet flowing ink that I can use easily with a fine or extra fine. And look at how pretty that is. Gorgeous. The next one is Birmingham Penco Projector Film. And this one, how would you class this? I originally, like when I'm swirling the ink sample vial in my hand, I thought brown. Yes, brown. But then when I start swirling it with the sample vial, I was like, well, on camera here through the video, it looks it looks a lot darker brown than it does in person. But in in person to me, it looks a little bit more pink. That's so strange that even if I have put the camera at the most natural settings that I could, it still comes out a little bit differently. Um, but it does, it's got that pinky brown undertone and I'm gonna compare it to Sailor, is it Chiki or Kitsune Biori? And there are some similarities there, but this is a darker, uh, leaning more brown than uh, Kitsune Biori, which only means more pink. But I really like this color. It was definitely unexpected, but I don't know why it would be called projector film unless you're looking at what the, F the pictures look like on the film. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just me being confused by, by the naming conventions of these inks. Maybe I'm thinking too much about the naming conventions of these inks, but I really like this color. And Birmingham Penco pinks that I, Birmingham Penco inks, not pinks, realized that their flow is actually lovely in my pens. I haven't tried one that is too dry as of yet. So far, the, the flow in them is actually just what I prefer when I am inking up my pens. And like I said, I do like my extra fine and fines. Look at that. 
It looks more brown on on through the camera. So strange. The next one is Birmingham Pen Co. Smoke Box. And I expected gray, black. And they're not, gray and black is not normally a color that I have too much in my collection. I think I maybe have one black and two grays out of all of my sample ink files. And they're not ones that I normally reach for. They're ones that maybe I need to start do, you know, using for finer lines in fountain pen ink drawing, but they're not ones that I normally reach for. I'm not sure why. I think maybe it's because there are so many beautiful colors out there that I just think, why am I going to limit myself to gray and to black? Even though there are some grays out there that are beautiful, like dye mine Earl Grey. Um, but I'd rather have color, which is so funny because I think that before fountain pen inks, I was very much, I like my black ink. I did like using highlighter colors though for different things. So maybe that's why I'm so drawn to different colors of fountain pen ink. And that's probably why I don't reach for gray or black as much. And I know some people love having at least one pen filled with some sort of black ink or gray ink at any one time. And I just think, you know what? I don't actually have anything inked up with black or gray. I don't. Most, most, most all the pens I currently have inked up are with a color, really pretty color. So maybe it's something that I could start incorporating having one pen just have a gray ink but this one I feel like is more black so but I put it in the gray category but it is you know it's black <laughs> that, that's my neutral thoughts on it <laughs> the next one is Birmingham Pen Co Snowflake and with where I live uh, in Canada snow is white snow is white um, not to say though that this color isn't very very pretty but a snowflake is white i mean it's very beautiful blue and then it dries with a really pretty red sheen but i i don't know why it's called snowflake it's very hard for me to call a blue ink a snow or snowflake because i see snow maybe six months out of the year and it's white maybe it's just me again Maybe I'm overthinking the, the naming conventions of these uh, inks, but if we're just looking at the color and the flow, the color is really pretty and I got it all over my finger. Thankfully, I've been able to wash most of it off, but it is a very, very pretty ink. I'm actually, you know, it's, it's a darker blue than I normally like to go for, but I think I will definitely try and use it during 30 inks, 30 days. Uh, once I've gotten all the, the stains off of my fingers, but again, sometimes going for a color that I wouldn't normally use and, and you know, makes, it, it's a whole different experience. And I really like that now that I bring that up to the camera and I made a mess. <laughs> the next one is Colorverse Space Laika, Laika, Laika. I'm trying to um, pronounce that correctly. So I apologize if I mispronounce that so this is another brown um i'm not sure what the purpose of naming it is and then you're gonna see here shortly after i do my swirls is that i start to label it as you're gonna see shortly because i seem to have just gotten in the habit of naming all of the inks here, Birmingham Pen Co. I start writing down Birmingham Pen Co. And then I was like, oh crap. <laughs> so once I figure it out, I'm like, ah, I'll just do a very long, we yeah, have the, the line variations there. And maybe this, this whole page, I'm looking at it now while I'm doing the voiceover, this whole page is a little bit of a hodgepodge. It's a little bit all over the place, but it really does showcase the colors. And I mean, I like the way that it looks, so. I'm not too picky about whether it looks absolutely perfect. For me, having those mistakes and imperfections is all part of the process. And I can look back on it and be like, that's where I misspelled the name or named it Birmingham Penco instead of Colorverse. That's where I dropped ink instead of putting it in the right spot, things like that. 
So again, another brown. <laughs> and this one is actually darker. If you're comparing it to Birmingham Penco Fox Squirrel, it is darker than that one. And it feels like they're within the same shade, but this one is just more um, pigmented. The next one is Le Bon Vibrant, or sorry, Lamy Vibrant Pink. Have I tried a Lamy ink before? I don't think I have. I've looked through my swatches and I don't have a Lamy swatch of any ink. So thank you for, uh, thank you to Pam for letting me try my first ever Lamy ink. And this vibrant pink is wow. Definitely in your face pink. And when it dries, it has a fantastic sheen. I don't normally go for sheen, but this one, I think it's like a little, it's a gold sheen and it's very pretty. The sheen doesn't overpower the pink at all. It actually kind of just stays on the edges of the writing sample, which is probably why I like it because it doesn't overpower the color. There are some inks where the sheen is just a layer on top of the ink color and you can't even see the base ink. All you can see is the sheen. Whereas in this one, I think it's a perfect balance of both the color and the sheen. And from what I can gather on my Kakamori Brass Nib, it's not too wet, not too dry. And it has, you know, it looks really good even with a finer line. And I think this may be one that I'm going to try during 30 inks, 30 days, we'll see. But it really is a vibrant pink, like the name says. See, this naming convention, I understand. Look at that, lovely. The next one is my first Vinta ink that I'm trying. It is Blue Blood or Duzong Bugao. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I mean, I am Filipino, but I there's some names that I've never heard of before, so my pronunciation might be off. But this is a dark blue with a red sheen. And it reminds me, I think, I've never tried this ink before, but it reminds me of Organic Studio Nitrogen. That dark blue, that royal blue with that red sheen. I've never tried Organic Studio Nitrogen. I, I don't think I'm going to put that into my basket anytime soon, but from what I've seen from other people's samples and swatching, it looks very, very similar to that. I don't have too much else, I don't think, in my collection that looks very similar to this, but it was very interesting to be able to try this. And I don't have any other Vinta inks to compare this to, but so far, I think this would be good to try out. And, you know, this is what I like about 30 inks, 30 days, is it will allow me to use up inks that I wouldn't normally gravitate to if I'm only inking up eight pens a month. Whereas with 30 inks, 30 days, it allows me to try out different pen and ink combinations that I wouldn't otherwise have room for during a regular month. So I'm hoping to give this a try during 30 inks, 30 days, if not in September, then definitely in November. But glad to have my first Vinta inks, especially knowing that they are made in the Philippines. And I'm just going to bring up the roadie sample. Like, look at how pretty that is. And you can tell that sheen is just going to be amazing. The next one is Jin Hao Apple Green. Again, my first time with a Jin Hao ink. And it's named Apple Green because, oh, look, I dropped another. <laughs> what is it with me today? Putting things in the wrong spot, naming things incorrectly. Uh, but hey, that seems to be the theme of the day. And there you go. That green is beautiful. And I don't know if I would call it an Apple Green. It looks more like a Kelly Green. I feel like I have a university sweatshirt that is this color but I really like it. One of the things though that I'm noticing is that it is a very wet ink. No matter how much ink I tried to take off of the Kakamori Brass Dip Pen, it just, the ink just came off so thick onto the Tomoe River paper. And um, one of the things that I was afraid of was that this was going to bleed and shadow. And I mean, it does have a bit of uh, shadowing through to the other side, but there was no bleed through. 
funny enough with the writing sample um, but it is a very pretty green and really great I think for fall like the transition from summer to fall I think it's a very good color for that and glad to have tried my first Jin Hao ink I've never tried a Jin Hao ink and I didn't even know that they produced ink so it was very nice to be able to give that a try but look at that color gorgeous and the last ink is another Jin Hao ink it is Jin Hao purple simple not confusing it's purple <laughs> and i you guys know how much i love purple and i really like this one it's to me it's amazing how many purples there are out there how many shades of purple there are out there and this one does not disappoint it's also a very wet flowing ink like the Jin Hao apple green so I may if I if I put this in a pen I'll put it in a pen that I feel like writes a little drier than my other ones or a really you know an extra fine nib I think the Jin Hao inks would work very well in extra fine nibs but look at the color it is it's very vibrant in terms of its purple and Again, the way that Jin Hao named it, it is purple. There, there's no other way to call that. It doesn't have any promo shading or anything, but sometimes you just want a really good purple, and I feel like this color is it. And so, just filling out the last of the sampling here, and then I'm going to bring up the Rhodia paper just so you get a closer look. And then I'm going to do a comparison of all of these inks with ones that I currently have in my collection. So there are all of the inks that were sent to me by Pam and I have made a mess with a couple of them so they don't all line up exactly but that's okay. I think that's also part of the process and I am a mess. I wonder how many ink stains I actually have on my face. <laughs> oh well. All right but I am just impressed at the sheer number that she sent me. I thought there were 21, but I think there were 20 plus the other ones that had been sent to me, I think. Now I'm just counting in my head. Um, but I'm looking at these and I was surprised at how much I liked the Vinta Blue Blood. It reminds me of that um, Private Reserve Tanzanite, but this one is a little bit more blue. And then the Jin Hao Apple Green reminds me of, what is a really good, it's not Dye Mine Meadow, I believe it's, um, uh, what is it? Taking out my little box here for a comparison. It's a pilot ink and it is it, is it Shin Ryoku? I think Shin Ryoku is a lot darker. Ah, oh, very similar actually. Yeah, look at that. That is a really beautiful green, but it is a very, very wet ink. I really like that Jin Hao purple as well. Now, is it close to Murasaki Shikibu of Pilot? Let's find it. I'm just going through my little box here. Okay, so this is a little lighter and this is definitely darker. Uh, I don't see any sheening on that, but it is still a very pretty purple. I really like that one. And then I was surprised to buy Birmingham Penco Heron. I feel like that, I mean, it doesn't look anything like Jacobin Emerald of Chavour, but I feel like that looks more like Le Bon and the Poseidon Green. Nope, it's a bit too dark. Ooh, or maybe Herbon Vert de Gris. Where is the letter H? <laughs> Herbon Vert de Gris. Okay, so this one is a little bit darker and more gray, but really pretty color. I feel like there's another one. Narwhal, the Novelor. Um, that was sent to me. There we go. Atlantic blue. Yes, there is the match. Narwhal Explorer Atlantic blue is very similar to Birmingham Penco Heron. But the one that is so confusing to me is Birmingham Penco Armadillo. But I feel like that is very similar to Ferris Wheel Press Madam Mulberry. And I'm trying to find the sample here. There we go. Yes, those two are so similar. Like you can't tell if it's gray, you can't tell if it's purple. So I put it in both categories and I really like that. And then Fox Squirrel, you've got a brown. You guys know how I feel about browns. I, I love having a brown in my collection, but what would, it feels like more of like a caramel brown. 
if that makes sense. Like it's, it's lighter in places. And then, I mean, where it pulled, yes, it's very, very dark, but in the writing sample, it's very light. I love Birmingham Pen Co. Basil Pesto, which I spelled wrong a few times. It's definitely different to arugula, but I'm looking up Colorverse PSC. Uh, there's some similarities, but did you see that when it first went down, it had like this yellow orange color to it as well? Now, I don't have any chromatography strips, but I love the way that that dried. I also really like Copperhead. I don't think I have anything that really matches that. And then this Freshwater Bog is a really pretty blue. It's almost like a blue purple gray is what I can say about that. I really like that too. Projector Film reminds me of Sailor Shikiori Kitsune Biori. And let's find that one. Kitsune Biori. I'm making it sound Italian. There's some similarities to it. I feel like this is a little bit more pink but there are definitely similarities to that. Let me see if I can find the, um, I have all my samples on the floor. <laughs> That's what I'm bending down here for. Where did I put it? Uh, what am I looking for? Projector film? Is that what I'm looking for? So that is, yeah, projector film. So the comparison to, okay, so this does it definitely has a little bit more brown. This is leaning a little bit more towards the pink, but very very similar and it's nice to to see that so and then you've got smoke box which is like a dark gray almost black snowflake what does that one remind me of it's like a robert oster color um and i'm trying to remember off the top of my head but this is blue suede and it doesn't really have the sheen where's tanzanite well, you've got Australis Hydra here as well from Robert Oster, but again, it doesn't really have the sheen. What does that remind me of? Possibly Bondi Blue. It doesn't have the sheen in this sample, but very, very similar in color. And then you have Colorverse Space Leica, or Leica, I'm not sure, Leica, Space Leica. There's another brown, but you can see the differences here that this is a darker brown and this is definitely a lighter brown. I love Lamy Vibrant Pink. I love the way that that sheened and that pulled. So there's so many different colors in that and it really is a punch you in the face type of pink. But I really like that. I don't think I have anything similar to that. I mean, you have Pilot Oroshizuku Kosu Mosu, but it's not that, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? That's It's not so much in your face. Like there's very similar, base colors but this one has the sheen and the sheen really pulls around the edges there and then you have vinta blue blood which what i said it looks very similar to private reserve tanzanite and this is why i organize this in alphabetical order because otherwise it looks similar but it's got a different sheen this has like more of that gold sheen and this has that red sheen and this one looks more purple and this one is definitely blue so those are the inks that were sent to me by Pam and I'm so, so grateful for every single one that she sent. Not just for the, you know, the generosity of selling, sending these ink samples, but also allowing me and giving me the time to just, just sit here and swatch inks because I find that so relaxing, so meditative. I was watching Outlander in the background, which is why I did the, um, I did the voiceover. All right, but that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.